What is going on, everybody? Welcome to the FN Studios. This is Five Rounds Today. He's Robin Black. I'm John Ramdeen, and we're discussing a whole bunch of stuff. World Series of Fighting 24 that went down in Connecticut over this uh, past weekend. If you were in Canada, you got to see the card live here on FN, a former UFC welterweight title challenger taking on a former UFC middleweight title challenger. Uh, and the winner to get a crack at another UFC <laughs> welterweight title challenger. So uh, we're going to talk about that. Uh, we're going to look ahead to the UFC's return to Dublin, Ireland, UFC fight night. Dustin Poirier uh, taking on Irish Joe Joseph Duffy. And man, it's going to be a hell of a fight. And guess what? If you're in Canada, people are watching around the world. It's like, man, I got to move yeah, to Canada. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, main should, card it's great here. Right here on FN. So you get to see Adreza Madani making his return, taking on Norman Park. Uh, it was supposed to be Stipe Miocic mm -hmm. and Ben Rothwell. It's right. a little disappointing, yep. uh, disappointed about that. But nonetheless, we're going to get a whole slew of great fights. Louis Smolka and your boy Patty Houlihan. Patty. Uh, yeah. Main event, uh, your thoughts. If, you, uh, if you're a betting man, you don't bet on, on the fights, no. do you? I did sometimes for sometimes like, you do, right? I did for about three weeks. Started with $100. Yeah. And then when I got to 1100 I took 1000 out. And I don't remember. I must have like lost the other 100 or I withdrew it. Or maybe it's still there. I don't know. But it was an experiment to kind of... I, I try to figure out every angle there is to yeah. learn about fighting. We'll train it. We'll fight. We'll you know uh, watch it in different ways. I manage yeah. some guys. Yeah. Whatever yeah. you can do to learn stuff about it. So I'm like, well, this betting thing. It was nice. I won $1,000 yeah, wow. over like two shows or three shows. Now, I have a question for you. When, when you put down some money on, because there are very few people, that, in my opinion, that are on my level when it comes yep. to enjoying yeah. mixed martial yeah. arts. Yeah, just uh, like... It just, yeah, it just exactly. Yeah. I just love it so yeah. much. To me, it's the greatest yeah. sport in the world. And... Uh, yeah, I consider you yep. one of those guys. You know, yep. you and I sit. Yeah. We watch yeah. many fights yeah. together, yeah. and we both have yeah. that same yeah. excitement. Yeah. Uh, does it change your perspective or your level of excitement if you're betting on fighter? If you're watching a fight between fighter A and fighter B, and you put a bet on fighter A, does that change your perspective? Does it wreck your enjoyment if fighter A is getting beat down by fight, fighter B and money is on the yeah. line? It 100% changed my perspective. Yeah. That's why I stopped doing it. We make our living. One, we have fun. This is like, you know, there's a variety. Some people, their very favorite thing is, you know, Diddy. Or like, uh, you know, or some band or yeah. a television, a movie, uh, going to a certain bar. Our favorite thing is watching fights. Yeah. And if left, just I would say it's our second yeah, favorite right, yeah, thing. Right. Yeah, I like my wife too. She's cool. And she, sweetie, like just just a little <laughs> bit of fighting for me. Uh, she's not. She's, she's, like, she's not watching she this. She's not watching this. She has way better things to do than this. But uh, but yeah, it's the perspective is how are you enjoy it. It's also how we make our living. Like we talk about it from this curious perspective, and I didn't watch it the same way at all. And so that's why I would not bet on fighting anymore. Um, my wife, after I did win a bit of money, she's like, well, maybe this could be like a part-time job. You know, like yeah. a, your insight allowed it. No, absolutely not. That, I'm not You're down. going down a rabbit yeah, hole exactly. that you're you not coming want. back from. Uh, I don't know uh, how much, you know, if you, how you consume this show. If you're somebody who watched a lot of our shows, then you know who Gabe Morenci is. Yeah. We will have, Gabe is the guy who talks about betting oh, a lot. And we have our boys, Cody and Paul, who are also into that. But Gabe is a degenerate. <laughs> Gabe and he he calls himself one. He calls we I don't we don't specifically have names for the type of yeah. hardcores. Yeah. The type yeah. of people who watch fighting this way. He's his name is degenerates <laughs> for people who gamble like him. And he's like oh. That's what that, that he's, he's stressed out, yeah, he's, he's sweating. sweating. He's trying to watch fights but he like you know, and it's like the fight has to get finished by the under. Yeah. So I'd like round two and a half, and he's like, get up, get up. Oh, oh, yeah, he's so yeah, mad. Yeah. The guy, and then the rest of the card, he exactly. It he doesn't, doesn't like either guy. He's no interest. He's just, he's interested in the result, <laughs> which will Im improve his bank account. So I'm out. Yeah. I'm out of gambling. And then on yeah. top of that, the whole, the rest of the card's ruined for him. Yeah, like right. if, if this, oh, my uh, parlay wrecker. It's like, like uh, so what fight? Uh, we have the main events coming. Ah, fuck the main event. I don't care. I'm already out. So. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so. Now, have Having said that, there is no doubt this will make fighting less enjoyable for you and I. Yes. But for some other people who kind of like it, it actually might make them it more enjoyable. Right. Because now they have a real, to literally a dog in the fight. <laughs> like it's like, come on, Patty, get him. You know, like it could, for other people, it could definitely give them more interest. And uh, 
uh, I'm friends with the guys from Counter Move, and I know some of these other big um, fans. Our guy sites. Brian, yeah, and Christine, yeah, yeah. and uh, and Aaron, uh, good people. And Counter Move is a cool site where you play fantasy uh, fighting. No, that's fine. We'll play it sometimes. I've played it, and some. Right, I, I said yeah. I would get involved. Yeah, it's, you know, I it's, just it's not it, my it's, thing. Yeah, I know. Like, and, like, and and I, everything doesn't have to be everybody's thing, and uh, so I like it. But for certain other people, then this is really interesting. And Brian said this to me, and uh, from Counter Move, he's like. Some people, and we see them, they just watch the main event. But yeah. if they play counter move, now they may actually, you know, because you have to choose five fighters. Right, right, they may right. actually have somebody on the undercard that they've now got in their game. Yeah, that's cool. So they're paying Very attention. Cool. So there is the potential to make you a bigger fan playing fantasy or gambling. But for us, we can't be bigger fans. Yeah. We could only I, be smaller I, fans. Exactly. I so, think, uh, you know, when you look yeah. at it that way, it's, you know, we we are marks. We're the biggest fans out 100%. there. 100%. And, uh, however, with that said... When you look at all the different angles of mixed martial arts, when you look at, uh, you have American Top Team versus the TriStar Academy in the main event, Dustin Poirier, Joseph yeah. Duffy. If you had to put a thousand bucks, you're going into your own bank account. You have to take a thousand dollars out of your own bank and you have to put it on somebody in the main event. Who are you putting it on? I would personally take that thousand dollars and I would buy beer and tequila and pizza <laughs> Not for allowed. my friends. Not allowed. Right. You have to put money on somebody. I'll go with Poirier. You put it on yeah, Dustin I will. Poirier. I, I, I would, would too. I will, uh, you know. And we like Joe. Yeah, we think he's very love skilled. Him and, we, and we believe that Joseph Duffy can finish Dustin yes. Poirier in yes. this fight. It's just based on the fact that what we've seen, we've had the chance to call yeah. Dustin Poirier's fights before mm -hmm. he went to the Ultimate Fighting Championship. So we've seen what this guy is made yeah. of. And we know, you know, working with Tim Crater and then make eventually making that move down to Coconut Creek, yeah. Florida, doing the necessary yeah. things to become a meaner, tougher, yeah. uh, more skilled combatant, toying back and forth with one which, which is the best weight for yeah. me? He feels 155 pounds. Main event, uh, a pro, high profile fight like this. You're again, you're the main yeah. event. You're in a huge yeah. market in Ireland. Uh, I just have a feeling that even though he's in enemy territory, it doesn't matter to yeah. him. He got mentally stronger over the last few fights too. And and I don't know when I was chatting with him on the phone. I don't think it was something he was even intentionally talking about, but what was coming across was his understanding of himself more. Mm -hmm. And that sounds all nebulous. And it sounds, Being self-aware you know, is key. But uh, yeah, man, mindfulness, understanding where your strengths and weaknesses are. And the truth is the same things that made him be able to beat most people were some of the same things that gave him a challenge in his last loss to Connor. Um, because if you can't just bust through everything, now what do you do? And what does it do to your brain? And what does it do to the way you go? And if you only have one direction, I can beat up everybody. That in that that like ferocity, uh, foaming at the mouth, just be walking forward and beating guys up uh, is w amazing. It'll work until the day it doesn't work, and it's all of a sudden it didn't work. And so I think he learned a lot after that. I think he's a way better fighter than he was before that, and he's really fun to watch. And there's, he's special, like he's rare. And uh, but so is Duffy. That's why the fight's so good. This is one of those weird ones where it's like I don't know how many people will watch it on Fight Network. I think a I lot. think a lot. I think a lot. Yeah. One, you watch Fight Network because you're a real fight fan. Yeah. Fighter. And one of the reasons why is. A, where did Joseph Duffy come from before he fought in yeah. the UFC? He fought in Cage Warriors. Yeah, which, we aired Cage yeah, Warriors. Yeah, so you, people sure. got to see his career just like Connor's. Yeah. And it's like, oh, yeah, I watched that guy yeah, fight yeah. before. The submission guy who's now starting yeah. to knock guys out. Yeah. And I know you have an upcoming breakdown about uh, zones yeah. of, of yeah. fighters. Yeah. And it seems that when you look at the stylistic matchup of Joseph Duffy and Dustin Poirier, they both kind of control... The yeah. same range. Yeah, the same that's zone. really interesting. Once you throw an eye, once you really develop an idea out, and then you look at it, and you, it's not a real thing until you can defend it. It's like when somebody goes in and they, they write their thesis. You want to have all these people come in. It is. I don't think you have much defending left. Also, this is not something that I came up with. This, the idea that there is a two steps out range. Uh, a tight circle range, as in boxing is the tight circle range, the pocket in a little different and chest to chest, that's undeniable. And once you start looking at fights in terms of how guys fight in those zones, I kind of workshopped it with with um, 
uh, Gustafson and Cormier. DC yeah. for the purposes of using it for Rousey and Hawley because the UFC hired me to do that breakdown yeah. for them. Uh, I don't know what they're going to do with it. Yeah. They bought it. You yeah. know what I mean? It's like, hey, make us a breakdown. All right, here and it is. Cool. Uh, it, it, uh, yeah. Hopefully it's not the Kevin Smith Prince situation yeah, right, where it right. goes yeah, into no the kidding. vault. It just goes in the vault. <laughs> I think it turned out well. But it, the, you're right. With these guys... I mean, there's so many elements of where to test it. How's my wrestling versus his? Oh, well, that's this. That, that's an old school way. How's my jiu-jitsu versus his? How's my striking versus his? A lot of times you'll hear people breaking down a fight and they'll go, oh, his wrestling's better. Well, that's not even, that doesn't even mean anything yeah. anymore because it's better in this position but worse in this mm -hmm. one. And when tired, this guy's better, but with an underhook, he's better. But zones are, are kind of an undeniable thing. And both of these guys, that tight circle, that true boxing range, they both love it yeah. in there. And, then, and I would imagine that's where a lot of this fight's going to yeah. take place. Yeah, I think so. And so if you're thinking in terms of range, uh, Poirier is more than happy to push into that true pocket. Mm -hmm. In MMA, the pocket is slightly different. We're uppercuts, we're hooks, but we're also elbows mm -hmm. of all directions. We're knees mm -hmm. and, the, of course, grappling and trapping. Yep. And then chest to chest, Poirier wants to test those. And from the outside, the guy, in theory, with the better kicks or ability to catch kicks has that. And when I look at these guys, po the only thing that's different, Poirier has more experience in all this range, and mm -hmm. he's super fearless. But uh, this Duffy cat seems fearless, too. It's a it's From a striking perspective, it's brilliant. And on the mat, Duffy's like, I can sub any of these guys. I don't know if you can sub these upper level yeah. UFC guys. I don't know if you can dominate them or crush them positionally. So this fight is per literally perfect. Little, little tougher than Duffy's ever faced. But you talk to people for us and others, they're like, he can handle it. I'm going to take a quick break. When we come back, we're talking more about UFC fight night in Dublin, Ireland that goes down live here on FN if you're in Canada. Don't go anywhere. More five rounds today when we come back. is unreal. Every single seat was sold and not one of them is being used right now. Rules from the crowds here in Dublin. The loudest place I've ever been. The UFC is back in Ireland. Boy, is he spectacular. This kid is for real. Irish Joe Duffy. Oh, oh right hand. There it is. Dustin Poirier. And the crowd go absolutely wild. Welcome back to Five Rounds Today. John Ramdeen and Robin Black with you. UFC Fight Night. Dublin, Ireland goes down this coming Saturday. Uh, if you're here in Canada, you get to tune in to the main card action right here starting at 4 p.m. 4 p.m. Yeah, 4 we're going to be in Saskatchewan. We're going to be in Saskatchewan. Wayburn, Saskatchewan. Wayburn, Saskatchewan doing the play-by-play -play, uh, for the Prestige FC card. And uh, tons of great fighters on the yeah. card. And uh, it's just, this is one of our favorite things in the world to do is, uh, of course, you know, getting to talk to our, our audience and break down these fights. But to get to see the, the, the rising stars, the up-and-coming talent talent from all over the world it's just great yeah. to see because we get to say we told you so yeah you know we, we, it's we, like poor yeah that's exactly one. you know you were calling in in uh stefan's show yeah well, instinct uh, instinct, instinct I, I, I call, uh brendan thatch getting yeah. some i know this guy's going to be a yeah, stud i know, know eventually that. he's going to make his yeah. way to the ufc so it's just great to be able to see some of these guys john mcdessey yeah. too you know you know that's a very interesting one the idea that and there aren't that many times where we're like, oh, this kid's going to make it. Yeah. You can be fooled. Yeah, you can. And and uh, we're able to spot it. And it isn't just skill. It's some other thing. No, it's some like other thing. Thatch and Poirier yeah. have this yeah. other thing. And this Yanni thing Sherbatov yeah, as well. Yeah, 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 for sure. This necessary thing. And it's not just, well, he's handsome or he's going to be able to speak or he's marketable. It's some other thing. It's a presence. Mm -hmm. It's a confidence. And it has to be a real confidence because we see a lot of guys, that's right, you're going to be seeing mm -hmm. me in the UFC. Yeah. I'll take anybody. And yeah. then they, you know, they're average. And I don't know necessarily know why I felt that way with Brendan Thatch because he just dispatched everybody. So mm -hmm. it's not as if, oh, I could, I saw the yeah. guy took some serious yeah. punishment yeah. And because he got through yeah. that. Because for the most part, he's smoking the competition. Mm -hmm. But there was something, as you yeah. mentioned, the swagger, the confidence, the this this aura around these guys. Uh, Poirier the same way. It's easy to be tricked by, yeah. by that. 
if you haven't seen it a thousand times. Yes. Once you've seen it a thousand times, it is glaringly obvious to us when it's real. And to people that have been fighting, there, we got f- friends and people who watch some of our shows and, and give us feedback, but watch the fights longer than us yeah. and more fights yeah. than us. There yeah. are, there, and uh, we're honored that those are some of the people who watch our show or watch us do this thing. But uh, there, are, there are people out there who've been watching even more. Uh, you've watched more fights than I have in your life because you edited yeah, oh, yeah. old Forget. pride yeah, shows yeah. and stuff. So these, things, this yeah. is how you learn and uh, how you learn these things. But there are guys out there that, you know, when I was singing in a rock band wearing tight pants, they had watched 50,000 yeah, fights. Right. And you take one of these guys and you take him to a show like Prestige, they will pick the two guys and they'll be right. Yeah. Because it's not some genius you develop, it's time. Yeah. You see, see 5,000 and, and there are 50 that you think are great, and then 45 of them are fake great, mm-hmm. and the five are real. And after you've seen it for a few years, you, you just pinpoint the five, and the fake ones are glaringly, mm-hmm. obviously, lying to themselves and you. There's something about these special ones. Poirier's had it from day one. Mm-hmm. I think another guy, and you gotta give a shout out to Eamon Zahabi, who yeah. got his fifth professional mixed martial arts victory, dispatching his opponent in like 18 seconds. And we've been hearing for years, eventually, yeah. eventually, eventually, mm-hmm. this guy's gonna make his way to the Ultimate Fighting Championship. But I know there's a lot of pressure put on a guy like that, because his last name's friggin' mm-hmm. Zahabi, for God's yeah. sakes. Uh, the brother of one of the most successful coaches in mixed martial arts, of course, Sefirah. Sahabi, who was the coach of uh, Rory McDonald yeah. and the great George St. Pierre. Yeah. So a lot of pressure for him, but I've been in the room with Eamon Zahabi, yeah. and I watched him light up former WEC champions. I watched him light up guys that are in the UFC. So you just knew that it was a matter of time. Yeah, and, uh, you know, we do – we probably do – either through being there or spending time with them or through transitive property of just being exposed more because we're in Canada. We see more for us and others. Yep. And it would be easy, again, same thing, when you're looking at what's real and what's really real. Yep. If, a, if a, a coach or an environment or a structure is good but overrated, that'll, that'll be determined quickly. The more time you spend with for us, all, we hung out in Saskatoon yep. over dinner with the same people that put on Prestige. And I'm chatting with him about time management, about you know his self-improvement, about all of those things. And he's telling me about how he breaks up his day in a way that he can be smarter. He's mentally super strong, constantly learning, not shaken by things. Eamon has those same things. They're they're genetically very similar. It's a family of martial artists. And, and yeah, and, yeah, and so Eamon will be very special. Uh, and it's also interesting. There's a real debate um, with at at that mid level of fighter now. Eamon is a far 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 above that mid level. So is Ryan, uh, who's in the Ultimate Fighter right now. Ryan Hall. Ryan Hall uh, out of there, and Mandel Nalo, who I believe is, is fighting on, on in prestige this card. prestige card. Yeah. card. And uh, we spoke with Mandel when we were in Quebec, uh, Quebec for Yanni's show, yeah. the uh, Fight for Pride, yeah. which is another awesome show. And Mandel was saying, you know, as my coach for us says, you know, as you know, could we take a really tough guy now? We could, but there are nights you cannot with it with it, while while still inexperienced. Well, you cannot perform to your level. If tonight is one of those nights and we get you hurt bad, uh, this doesn't help your progress mm-hmm. it's bite-sized steps of improvement guys want it now yeah though. Guys the, I do think, want it now. I mean, but the, Mandel yeah. understood he understood that there's patience he's got a great fight in Weyburn Saskatchewan yeah. it's gonna be fun to call that that kid's fight check him out look up some of these guys these are the guys you'll be hearing about uh, Eamon obviously is, is easier to, to relate to as for us his brother but these are the guys you'll be hearing and about. we have the luxury you know you mentioned for us that you know because we're in Canada that we get to see him more often but this is a destination people People are traveling from all over yeah. the world to yeah. go to Montreal. Well, jo- Duffy. Joseph Duffy, also on the card, uh, the undefeated uh, Tom Breeze, the submission yeah. master, yeah. Uh, 24 years of age, from England, yeah. decided that TriStar is the place for him. Uh, how is this going to help Joe Duffy when he has other guys in the card that have, uh, you know, getting ready the same time, same place the, as him? I, I don't know how anybody who isn't in one of these rooms anymore, like ATT or TriStar or these places, uh, Demetrius is an exception. His coach is a genius who gives him almost 100% of his mm-hmm. attention, and they built this thing together. The rest of these guys, how can you compete with a Duffy 
or a Poirier if you don't have a room full of incredible yeah. fighters every single day. Never mind br brilliant coaching systems that are proven to work. Uh, you know, an environment in which you're surrounded by good and great and very great. All of that stuff is so valuable. And Duffy's surrounded by that. Whatever he came in, whatever raw material he came in, he has grown a lot since he's been there. And he, you know, he he spars with guys that he knows and at least he knows until he's done it that are as tough as Poirier. And Poirier's done the same. 125 pounds. Uh, we're going to take a short break in a minute. Uh, but Patty Houlihan, Lewis Smolka, uh, much like Joseph Duffy where, you know, you're fighting in front of your home crowd. Uh, that can be a detriment. Yeah. Or it can help you. Uh, I, we talked to our buddy, Dr. Dave Klonsky, who said, you know, people yeah. can use that, yeah. the environment. Yeah. It's an environmental thing to bring you up. Yeah. But I imagine it, the pressure can bring it, you down. It, it can too. bring you down, too. Yeah. Uh, but Pat, I think you have to be mentally yeah. strong. And Patty Houlihan seems to be one of those guys that doesn't matter. Yeah. He's going to feed off the, his hometown crowd. Yes. And now I'm biased. I, Patty became, I became friends with him. I liked him very much. But even more than that, David Mullins is a very good friend of mine. And I do another podcast with him, The Mentality of combat yep. sports and from spending time with Mullins I believe in him like I believe in his system he's helped me with things he's yeah. helped me with things I don't fight anymore but everybody has there's moments where I went in and, and sat down and spoke with Dana White about this breakdown yeah I talked to Dave before because if you have an important moment that you want to be able to perform well you should be in a state of performing well I could have all the preparation in the world to talk but if I'm not able to perform well in that setting talking to Dana I don't pr possibly end up doing this cool mm -hmm. job that I wanted to do that pressure can get you talk to David he helped me a great deal with that now he works with Patty and he works with a uh, Iceland daily and he works with uh, most of that team when I talk to Patty I see reflected back in me a lot of the stuff that David talks about a lot of the, his system he's a sports psychology consultant he prepares these guys for battle and for life and Patty was sort of a street hooligan who now thinks like a warrior and that's powerful we're gonna take a quick break when we come back we're looking more at this 125 pound matchup the hooligan patty hulahan taking on the hawaiian lewis smolka Welcome back to Five Rounds Today, UFC Fight Night. Dublin, Ireland goes down this Saturday, October 24th? 23rd, yeah. 24th? Yeah. Main event, uh, Joseph Duffy taking on Dustin Poirier. Uh, the co-featured belt was supposed to be Stipe Miocic mm -hmm. and Ben Rothwell. Hopefully... Yeah. The UFC keeps that that's a that great idea. Yeah. That uh, you know, it's like I know uh, Miocic is out and Ben Rothwell's looking for an opponent. I wouldn't be surprised if they found yeah. Ben Rothwell a new Depends opponent. Depends how long Stipe's injured. Yeah, yeah. The, but make that fight. Yeah, that make fight. that fight. It's got to happen. It's just like uh, we were talking about uh, John Fitch and Jake Shields, and uh, I, th I think I let the cat out of the yeah. bag. We're going to talk about World Series yeah. of Fighting 24. Uh, John Fitch getting the win over Yushin Okami. Now John Fitch takes on Jake Shields for the uh, vacant. World Series of Fighting welterweight title because the cheater, yeah. the jerk, the, the jerk Husamar Poliaris, um, stripped of his title. Now it's going to be Jake Shields, John Fitch. How have we never seen that yeah, before? That know. should have happened in the UFC. Yeah, how did that fight not exist ever? It's Anyways, I, I digress. Yeah, yeah. Uh, let's get back to this this yeah. main card. But it's uh, I don't know what my point is of bringing up John Fitch. I don't know. But anyways, uh, oh, oh the other Stipe, day, Stipe yeah. Miocic. That's why. Uh, hopefully, they keep that uh, that fight intact, and uh, it's just a, a great idea. Yeah. Speaking of forgetting things, the other day when you weren't here, we were talking about uh, that guy who Sage Northcutt beat. Trevino, yeah. and he failed for weed. He had like yeah. 54 nanograms of yeah. marijuana in the yeah. system. And I said on the show, I'm like, if you you weren't here, I'm like, if, if you drug test John Ramdeen half the time, he's going to be over 54 <laughs> nanograms. 
And then uh, uh, Pollock. I don't know somebody, what you're talking about. Uh, Pollock or somebody pointed out to me that somebody had responded to me and said, "Hey, that's not cool, man. Don't throw Rev Dean <laughs> under the bus." And I'm like, "We're Canadians. We <laughs> literally all smoke weed oh, sometimes. Man. <laughs> you know, like, I it's love it. All Canadians. Listen, it's, it all comes down to perspective. I know yeah. Stephen Harper had, wants us all to go to jail for smoking the reefer, but come on. Yeah. It's either take Tylenol. My options are okay. I've got some some arthritis pain. Yeah. Take some Tylenol and wreck my liver, yeah. or vaporize. Some yeah. Stuff. Stuff. Yeah, the hey, choice is clear. Yeah, and uh, uh, why is this a conversation? I mean, uh, we're not pioneering this conversation. My man Eddie Bravo has been talking about yeah. this for years. Joe talks yeah. about it, but uh, I, I mean, I don't know what kind of society you live in where we are. Never mind, we're at, we're talking about fighting these guys. One hundred and seventy thousand dollars they yeah. wanted to find Nick Diaz, or yeah, that's did crazy. find Nick Diaz. A hundred and seventy. Yeah. The dude smoked a plant, rolled it up in yeah. some paper, yeah. inhaled the Wh- smoke. Which is actually a terrible idea. Like it, the idea of doing that before, like because I know we, we've talked about it before that there's this jujitsu culture yeah. of uh, you know hitting the vaporizer and yeah. hitting the mats to try to get yeah. this yeah. flow, creativity. this creativity. Yeah. That's only if you have a great training partner that's on that yeah. same mindset yeah. that will allow the yeah. flow. It's if you're <laughs> smoke some weed. Yeah. And then Husamal Polyaris is the guy standing across. Your reaction time is yeah. not going to be the and same. You're like, oh, man, exactly. <laughs> Yeah. You're yeah. Simple, that's the, that's yeah. what's going to happen. Yeah, so sure. I would never, no. ever suggest yeah. anybody no. hit the reefer and yeah. go inside no. the cage. That's no. just, to me, sounds I mean, crazy. It's it, In most cases, it's a medicine or it's something people used to yeah. unwind at the end of the day. But in Nick Diaz's case, I know we're digressing and we are not <laughs> under the influence of nanograms of whatever. <laughs> believe but, it or not. Believe it or not. Uh, but uh, in his case... The the big argument isn't oh should how should he be um, how should he be treated you know and punished or whatever the dude didn't fail the test three tests one and three came back um, a negative and those were the best tests by the elite labs in the world the the bullshit test by some other lab came up with a bit a minor positive which is literally like medically impossible so he passed the test give him back his hundred and seventy thousand dollars let the guy go and get your shit and apologize yeah it's not gonna happen uh 125 pounds uh lewis smolka and uh, patty houlihan uh when you break down this fight it's uh we know that patty can take a a beating. He's tough as friggin' nails. Uh, he's got. He's mentally strong. He's fighting in front of his people. I expect that he's going to push the pace. Mm-hmm. Uh, but Smolka is a very different type of fighter. He can get it done wherever he needs to get it done. And I know a lot of people out there. It's like, okay, well, you can knock this guy out. It's like I could, but. That might not be good for me. Let's mm-hmm. play the smart game, have the best strategy, and the best strategy is maybe engage Houlihan on the ground. I know he's kind of yeah. a submission guy, but I don't think it matters for Smolka. If Patty fought the way that Patty fights, and he was a heavyweight, he'd win almost every fight. Mm-hmm. Like, you know how Josh Barnett just yeah. won that fight? It was like, Meanness. I want to finish him, I want to knock him out, or I want to submit him. God, this guy's so tough, I can't do it. I'll just outwork Beat him. the shit out of him. All night, and then he'll fatigue. But at 125, that's a really hard game to play. Like, you're going to will him, I'm going to break him. Okay, well, I don't think, I don't know if you can mentally break Smolka. Definitely try it. Mm-hmm. Definitely push and see if that'll happen, because you're going to push anyways. Yeah. So you might as well. Okay, that won't work. Well, let's physically break him. It's really, it's, you don't generate And that's what Smolka power. did in his last fight against Neil Siri. Yeah. Picking him up, yeah. slamming him down, exactly. picking him up, yeah. slamming him down, yeah. hitting the body, yeah. and that's just what, trying to chip yeah. away. Yeah, and that's what uh, Patty's got to try to do. Or then you fatigue him so much that he breaks either with the inability to physically respond or he gets, it's so tough that it makes him mm-hmm. cover up or he, uh, he gets trapped in something. Small guys are hard to f- exhaust. Small guys are hard to physically break down because you don't, you can't generate the same mm-hmm. kind of power. So it's a challenging way to fight a guy who, on paper, is more skilled than you. The big thing about Patty is he's really improving all the time. So what you think he's going to show up and be, he might be better than that. But it's a really great fight. It really is one that uh, I think people who are n- uh, not quite sure about 125 are yeah. still. This might like change this their one. opinion. Yeah, they they like this. We're going to take a quick break and look at the rest of the card when we come back. Reza Madani making his return after a two-year absence from not only the Ultimate Fighting Championship, but mixed martial arts. Spent some time behind bars, I think. Holy smokes. Anyways, going to be taking on uh, Norman Park of Northern Ireland, uh, who's 24-1. and Uh, Don't go anywhere. We're discussing that and the World Series of Fighting 24 that was live here on FM. We come back to five rounds today.
Next week on Impact Wrestling, the world title series continues. Group champions square off as Mr. Anderson grapples with Austin Aries, and EC3 faces the Destroyer, Lashley, and Group X Division. Tigre Uno battles the High Flying Mandrews, and DJZ clashes with Manic. Also, in a broadcast exclusive, it's the main event from Bound for Glory 2015. See the match that changed TNA Wrestling forever when EC3, Drew Galloway, and Matt Hardy went to war for the TNA World Heavyweight Championship. It's all next week on Impact Wrestling. Welcome back to Five Rounds Today. John Ramdeen and Robin Black with you looking at UFC Fight Night from Dublin, Ireland. Joe Duffy and Dustin Poirier. Uh, before the break, we were talking about Patty Houlihan and Louis Smolka. And uh, y- you get the sense that it might be Patty Houlihan's night? It's hard when you look to, at the fact that, uh, you know, he keeps improving. He's still young. Uh, stylistically, a good matchup mm-hmm. against mm-hmm. Uh, Smolka. Has the hometown crowd on his side. Going to be working, at, uh, peaking the same night yeah. as Cahal Pendred. That helps a lot. Yeah. As well as Ashlyn Daly. Yeah. So when you look at all those factors, would you lean yeah. to more towards uh, Patty yeah. Houlihan? Yeah. Um, I, I, one thing I can say, Cahal Pendred's going to have a breakout night. He's yeah. due one. He's super mentally strong. He hasn't had the big night yet. The moment he's free out there, he's going to have a big night. What does that mean to be free? Just, I mean, he looks like he's feeling the judgment. He's feeling, you know, uh, the, the consequences of winning or losing. He's fighting, you know, he, he wants to win so bad, but he doesn't want to go out and just enjoy the fight. And when he does that, I think he's going to be good. And I think that's going to happen this weekend. Uh, as far as Patty goes, it's really hard. Like, this is, we actually don't even like making predictions. Yeah, I'm I hate betting it. on fights. Yeah, yeah. It to me, it isn't part of our job. Now I think there's people that disagree, and we have producers who are like, yeah. guys, you gotta make predictions. People love predictions. People might love predictions, and I, if you really think about why, and they see them on the screen, Ram Dean picks these five. Yeah. And if somebody watches the fights, they're like, oh, he's got what I got, and that's cool. That's cool. But ultimately, even when. The best fights you shouldn't be able to predict. The best fights you should be able to predict. There's definitely a great fight. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I'm proudest if when you go say and when, the, when I make predictions, they're about skill. You go and look at and I made a Conor McGregor and a Chad Mendes breakdown before their fight. This is what this guy needs to do. Yeah. You watch the fight and it's exactly it's a, those yeah. six yeah. six points. Yeah. That to me is our job. This this is going to be in play. This can happen. This guy's this is good. This guy's that is good. But fights are so complex. Even when guys get it right a lot, they're get, starting to get good at using uh, statistics because mm-hmm. statistics do tell stories. Yeah, they do. People in baseball, that's the yeah. whole game. Yeah. That's the whole, the whole mm-hmm. entire game. But the so you can if your goal is to be right sixty two percent of the time in MMA, you're better off to use stats. Yeah. Because in the long run of a thousand fights, I think those stats will matter. You'll win sixty two percent of the sure. time. But when it comes to the fights themselves, I just want to I want to give insight into what might you might be looking at and why this fight is need and what's happening. I think that's more our job. I think one of the reasons like, I look at Cajal Pendred and, and much like uh, Joe Duffy and Conor McGregor, we had a chance to see him mm-hmm. before he was in the UFC. Mm-hmm. He fought for Cage Warriors a bunch of times. And you, you looked at him and he had, he had a good record, went on a great winning streak, uh, had, uh, you know, you look at some of his victories, uh, Nicholas Masuke, who fights in the UFC, uh, David Bielkaden, who used to fight That's in the UFC, good, jiu-jitsu fighter. guy, yeah. Che Mills, who fought Rory yeah. McDonald in the UFC. So you, you knew the guy was going to be good. And then getting the victory over Sean Spencer, uh, and then uh, what I look at is his last fight. And you say that you yeah. feel that Cajal Pendred is going to have a breakout performance. When I look at Cajal, it just does not seem that his brain is working uh, perfectly mm. with his body, that he, he's an overachiever, so to speak. And I'm hoping we see that breakout performance. And I think if we're going to see it, we're going to see it after coming off of a loss. Yeah, and in Ireland, maybe. In, in Ireland, uh, yeah. Although, so you know that term weight feels the yeah. weight yeah. of the pressure? That's a really good term because sometimes it just looks like there's something physically. Cajal fights like he's wearing a weight vest. Mm-hmm. He just can't yeah, let that's, it that's go. That's what it feels like to me. You know, he's not letting it go. And in all those fights you mentioned, uh, 
he had this like, if I go after it, and you see, people, why do people love college football? Because these guys are just mm -hmm. gunning and running and smashing. Because if they have breakout, if they just go for it with everything they have, maybe they'll get to the, the NFL. Prize is there. Yeah, money, supermodels, a house fame, for your mom, yeah. fame, whatever. And Carl Pendred fought like that up to the UFC. I gotta, if I just let it all hang out, if I go after it with every ounce of my being, I'll get to the UFC. Now he's fighting like, well, I'm in the UFC. I gotta. I gotta you keep know, it. Yeah. I gotta, I gotta yeah. squirrel away the nut. Yeah. Whether that's true or not, I'll ask David. I'll bring it up mm -hmm. next. David uh, Mullins is his sports psychologist, uh, sorry, psychology consultant, and uh, they work together closely. And uh, I'll ask him if if there's any truth to that. Now I think. He, there's, there have become lines with these people who kind of get to peer into people's lives where he might not be willing to tell me. Mm -hmm. He'll tell me some thoughts, sure. but he works closely with a guy. He certainly can't tell me, well, he talks about his pressure or he's not quite found yeah, the yeah, gear. Yeah. Of, he can't tell me that. That's his client. Um, but I'm interested in this guy. Uh, most people who don't like him have never seen those fights he mm -hmm. talked about. And that's, that's what it comes down to. So I think that... Coming off of this split decision loss to John Howard, who's very good, yeah, I think that if anything is going to light a fire under yeah. Pendred, it is going to be yeah. that loss. And as you mentioned, now fighting in his own yeah. backyard. Uh, another, some other insight that Dave gave me regarding this is related to a thing. Ronda Rousey's mom was saying she hates his coach. Yeah, and I, and I said to yeah. him now. That shit doesn't interest me so much, but it starts to sometimes you go, well, what effect does this have? Because we're interested in the fight itself. Yep. So this nonsense that some people like just for its own sake, and that's, they can, you can like whatever you want. Um, my curiosity about it is, will this affect Rhonda? So I'm like, you know, hey, is this a bad time? You know, she's, her, her mom's coming out and saying all this I stuff I have a feeling she's coach. been saying a, exactly. a, a long time. That's what he said. He said, what's changed? She knows her mom hates her coach. Yeah. She knows her coach is like, Rhonda, I'm sorry, I don't know what to do about your mom. This has been going on. The fact is she said it in the press has no makes nothing different. And that's the same thing with Pendred. He's got this weird anti-hero kind of thing where people kind of like call him the greatest of all time, joking. Yeah. They've kind there's a weird sarcasm towards him that I don't think he de that he deserves. But people like to label things. It's fun to call Pendred the goat. LOL. If he feels any of that, that's weight. It's extra mm -hmm. weight he's got to fight with. He's got to go out, ignore all that, because what's the difference? What if you perform badly? Oh, they'll laugh at you. They're already laughing at you, man. Yeah. They're already making fun of you, uh, deserved or undeserved. Go out there and be free. But can you, uh, can, can you be naive? Can you put yourself in a bubble where it's like, no, nobody's laughing at me? You can't. You can't um, because that's not – you're pretending it's not right. true. If you but truly people can could, ignore that. They can yeah. – it's like, oh, well, I, I don't want to learn well, any of that stuff the, because it, it yeah. can hurt my ego. Yeah. If you truly just did not hear about it, but you are hearing about it. You are seeing mm -hmm. it. People are mentioning it. They are, like, joking you. And Poirier – Back to Dustin Poirier, when he fought Conor McGregor, he said, this guy ain't getting in my head, man. This guy's not getting to me. This, none of this matters. After the fight was over, he said, oh, oh, God damn, to it me. did matter. He, yeah, because he never dealt with it. Mm -hmm. You, If you deny it's true, that's a way to not deal with it. It's a procrastination of handling the reality. The reality is a lot of extra new shit comes when you fight Conor McGregor or Ronda Rousey or an, a number of other people, Nick Diaz. Mm -hmm. That's real. That's coming. It's a, it, it affects everybody. And you're like, it ain't affecting me. All you've done is not deal with it. Yeah. And not dealing with it won't make it work. And Dustin learned that. And he's very different now, the way he approaches stuff. And and Cajal can't ignore it either. It's like, ah, people act weird about you. So what? They're already doing it. Go out, be free, man. Go out and have fun. What is going to be not necessarily good for Cajal Pendred, but it might be good for his opponent, Tom Breeze. Again, working with a good team like mm -hmm. TriStar. Mm -hmm. They know that yeah. pot potentially that Pendred could be uh, mentally weakened, the pressure yeah. of fighting. You mentioned yeah. the weight, the weight yeah. of fighting in his yeah. own backyard. Oh, I can't embarrass Although myself. Although, look at all those wins. They were all in yeah, Ireland. that's true. You that's know, true. all of those wins were in Ireland. Uh, I think mental is one area he's totally fine and physical in that he will not be the more tired guy. Cajal yep. Pendred will not be the more tired guy in the fight. But I have a feeling Tom Breeze, 24 years of age, six foot three, eight victories, zero losses, six submissions, two KOs, no pressure on this guy yeah. whatsoever. Although he's British, right? It's, yeah. So it's still, but he's fought over there a lot too. Yeah. It's a good Bama. fight. It's a good fight. It's a, uh, yeah, this is. I mean, is this the one where Cajal Pender breaks out? Uh, maybe, but Breeze is really, really, really good. This will be a great fight. People, there'll be these people who have assigned value or meaning, oh, Cajal Pender. He can't let that get to him. 
and neither can he be motivated to change your mind. He just has to go fight like he's fought at, in his best fights against Jay Mills and all these other ones. we got to take a quick break. When we come back, we are looking at uh, the World Series of Fighting 24 that went down in Connecticut this past weekend. Hello, I'm John Pollock here to remind you to catch Fight News Now, the MMA edition, every Wednesday night here on Fight Network. You will hear from the biggest names making news in mixed martial arts, plus John Rambeen and Robin Black provide commentary and deep analysis on three rounds, and we'll also bring you the latest in fight culture on the ship. All that plus the weekly viral video. That's Fight News Now, every Wednesday night here on Fight Network. Welcome back to Five Rounds Today. John Ramdeen and Robin Black. They almost forgot the name of the show. Uh, uh, this past weekend. Five Rounds. What day? <laughs> what day? Today. Today. Uh, World Series of Fighting 24 went down at the Foxwoods Casino in Connecticut uh, on Saturday night. If you were in Canada, you got to see all the action live here uh, on FN. The main event, John Fitch getting the decision victory over Yushin Okami after a very first close first round. Uh, Fitch does what he does best. Yeah figures out a way to win and it was by uh, you know dominating Yushin Okami constantly pursuing the takedowns when he get down to the ground he tried to inflict damage Yushin Okami's yeah. just you, you, again it, you try to improve your position but as soon as you do he finds a way up so yeah. sometimes what you gotta do is just chip away and wear him down I uh I wasn't sure that he could necessarily do that to Okami, but then you're like, oh yeah, he can literally do that to every single yeah. person in the world, which was cool. Uh, before we get to, can I shout out a buddy of mine? Of course. Vladdy. Mexico. Uh, Vladdy Quiros. So he fought, he had got a second uh, pro MMA win in Mexico. I got a, a DM from a guy, Vladdy, and I remembered I'd said hello to him on, on Twitter before, and he's like, I have my second or uh, my fourth uh, fight, my second pro fight or whatever coming up tonight, and I'm nervous. I watch your guys' shows all the time awesome. blah 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 and so I just literally sent him a DM call me and my phone number and he said well you know I have to figure out the long distance I'm like, okay so a phone rings I'm like, what's that hey where are you calling from Mexico <laughs> <laughs> he probably spent his whole the show purse on, oh, on the no, long distance I'm not. sorry man but I did give him a like a bit of a pep talk and give him shouted, some love he got an exciting fight yeah well. it's a very exciting fight we, I watched it on his Facebook page and uh and just give him some insight about going out and having fun. He's like, and it was interesting. He said, you know, in my small town, people know me and, and, and they are cheering for me and I'm feeling a lot of pressure from that. Yeah, it's... And, you know, I talked to him about the fact that they're not in the cage yeah. with you. You're in there. You've been dreaming of this, a chance to do this again and go enjoy it. And he, he won a really fun fight. Uh, congrats, Vladdy. And thanks uh, for calling me, man. Awesome I enjoyed stuff. chatting with you. And thank you, everybody, for all the great support. It's, it really means a lot to us. Uh, you want to talk about excitement. Uh, we saw Vinny Magalesh on the card as well, getting the quick submission victory over Matt Hamill. Uh, one minute, eight seconds into round one. Nick Newell gets the unanimous decision victory. Uh, and then announces his retirement. Uh, the heavyweight champion, Blagoy Ivanov, uh, dispatches Derek Maiman in uh, round two by TKO. Uh, one of the most exciting fights, I think, on the card. Rick Glenn getting the oh, stuff. Yeah. Didn't, we didn't get a fan. chance to show that. I'm a big fan, too. Uh, but now John Fitch, as I mentioned before, in the main event, taking out Yushin Okami. Not taking him out, but yeah. taking him to the distance. Takes on Jake Shields in, uh, in, in the future yeah. for the World Series of Fighting uh, welterweight championship. I... Do you like what the World Series of Fighting is doing? Like, they're doing something different. And I know the goal is what's best for the sport. Yeah. But, and one of the things the World Series of Fighting uh, is doing, they announced during the broadcast this eight-man lightweight tournament. Mm -hmm. And we, we talked about it on... Uh, I think Fight News Now Fight Extra. News Now Extra that you're not a big fan of this. Well, I, I mean, I am a big fan right. of it. But you I, don't like yeah. it because you you've competed in the cage, you know what it's like to to get hurt and be taken yeah. out in a stretcher yeah. mm -hmm. that this is a real possibility for guys to fight three times in one night. Well, I I think like I like the idea of of a fighter 
I get the fighter wanting to do it. It's like, man, I mean, Joe Dirksen is one that, of our favorite guys, yeah. and, and um, his buddy uh, who has 100 wins. Uh, Jeremy Horn. Jeremy Horn. These guys fought those all the time. Exactly. And we look up to these guys. It's amazing. You talk to them about it, and Joe will give you amazing yeah. stories about those things. And I see it from the fighter's view, and I encourage those fighters to go after what they want, and I get it. But, man, you know, when you lose a fight that only lasts, a f- or you win a fight that lasted 45 seconds, the commission will suspend you for seven to fourteen. But should days. they? I mean, we gotta protect these guys. I'm Is, saying who's, you go who's, in. Who's, who's this? Who's in it? Who can benefit benefit by this night? Well, the promoter. Promoter always benefits. Sure. Promoter can promote a, a thing where where eight guys, four of them are gonna fight twice, and two of them are gonna fight three times, and they'll benefit because they'll get a lot of attention and people will watch their show. The fighters will benefit from the point of view that they get the challenge that they wanted, and that's fantastic. But the whole sport will suffer if one of these guys gets badly hurt or killed. If a guy goes into a fight with a concussion, yeah. and you've got a commission that is like, it's just not right, you just can't, you can't clear a guy to fight, but they're doing it because the promoter wants them to. I, I'm for the fighters. I understand what you know. you're saying, but at the same time, you throw a kick at me, I catch the kick, dump you on the ground, pass the side. Yeah, head and arm choke. Head and arm choke. Yeah. You shouldn't be suspended. No. Yeah. If you tap yeah. right away, like, yeah. you know. But you got to have a, they put in a minimum, um, they put in a minimum there that, uh, for that reason, because we don't know, you're all pumped full of adrenaline, you broke your fu- yeah. You broke your foot, you know, you broke your foot, you, you dislocated your shoulder, we don't even know. And so we say, dude, we know you're a fighter, man, but just take a couple of days off. That's what they say. Jeremy Horn fought, like, if you look down oh, yeah. that list, there were like three in a night, yeah. plus two the next night yeah. and stuff. And we admire those guys like crazy, but their athletes are bigger and they're stronger. And, That's and true. Uh, you know, in a show like this, there won't be no drug testing. There yeah. will not be drug testing. So one guy, you know, you're fighting the third fight, you've got a concussion, he's juiced up. We just... I, I, I don't want to be a killjoy. I don't want to be Debbie Downer over here. You, <laughs> you know? are. I know. I you... love. I I get it. It's just in the long run, Mike Ricci's oppor- Mike Ricci's freedom to have three fights in a night. I'm for that for Mike. Uh, but in the long run of the sport, this is probably not a good trade off. We're gonna take uh, our final break. When we come back, we're gonna wrap things up here. As a matter of fact, I think maybe in the weeks to come, we'll get Mike Ricci, yes, uh, get him on the line, yeah, and uh, talk about this fighting That'd be three. Great. Three times in one night. That's absolutely nuts. Uh, don't go anywhere. More of five rounds today when we come back. Hey there, fight fans. John Ramdeen joined alongside Robin Black here in our Fight Network studios, reminding you to catch five rounds every Monday at 7 Eastern. Five rounds is the most comprehensive MMA show on the planet as we focus on the whys and the hows of the MMA world. I mean, who else talks about how the kinesthetically adaptive unconscious and alpha posturing are used to gain a competitive advantage in a fight? It's five rounds every Monday at 7 Eastern, only on FN. Five rounds right here on FN, yeah! Welcome back to Five Rounds today. Before the break, we were talking about the World Series of Fighting. John Fitch getting a crack at Jake Shields somewhere down the line for the uh, vacant 170-pound championship. Also, uh, during the broadcast, the promotion uh, announcing the eight-men one-night tournament. Uh, some of the lineup. Luis Palomino yeah. in, the, in the tournament. Yeah. He's happy to go. Hey, hey, hey. Can I fight four times? <laughs> yeah. Is that okay? Uh, I get it. I get it from there. I'm not I'm not anti-fighter on any topic. Yeah, I, I, I get, get it from that point. Brian Foster on the card. Mike Ricci on the card. Brian Cobb. Uh, Jorge Patino or George Patino. Uh, the winner to get a crack at Justin Gaethje. Yes. So when I think about all those different Great. matchups. Fight, beat three guys. Yeah. And then and then, uh, the, then you got to fight. Wow, these guys are crazy. Uh, and then uh, in the future, uh, December 18th, uh, Lance Palmer uh, looking to defend his 145-pound championship as well as uh, Tyrone Spong also in action. So making some, yeah. some good moves. I yeah. think uh, what World Series of Fighting is doing is they're offering uh, an alternative for the UFC, an alternative yeah. in the sense that we know you're going to consume the UFC, but 
when there's no UFC going on, yeah. why don't you come and test our waters? Well, that, you know, to be uh, a, a really good point here is this was, pro- I don't know what the numbers will be, and that's not really my thing anyways, but this was the right time to do it. We've seen them go head-to-head with pay-per-views and the craziest stuff, but this weekend, and it wasn't just a weekend off of the UFC. I think there's only been two UFCs yeah. in four weekends or five. So people who do spend their weekends watching fighting had a weekend off already and then no UFC. So this one, uh, but there's not a lot of spaces like that. Yeah. And uh, how much fighting can you consume? Even us. You know, yeah. we like there's fighting all day on our channel. We don't get to watch because we're doing our jobs. Yeah. We're sitting so, here talking. And, and, about I tr- and I try to like again. There's there's just so much mixed martial arts out there. Titan and Legacy mm-hmm. and and Bama and uh, you know, there's just so much to consume. You want to consume it all because we want to be able yeah. to give the viewers say, hey, this is a guy you got to watch out for. This is a gal that's coming up from KSW, yeah. uh, Carolina Kavalkovitz. Yeah. You know, watch out for this undefeated girl. Is she gar- on gar- the Australia card? Uh, I bet she is. I think I she is. She is because they want to introduce her as a as Ex- a possible exactly. Uh, yeah. uh, so next week, uh, hopefully, we're going to be talking to me uh, talking to Val Letourneau. Yeah, maybe talking. I don't to know if we'll have her on five rounds today, but we definitely got her in the studio. That's going to be cool. We're going to all the fallout from the show in Dublin, Ireland, as well. We'll tell you what happened in Weyburn, Saskatchewan. Oh, yeah, uh, again, really looking forward to this week of mixed martial arts. He's my man, Robin Black. I got to thank the the guy on the board, Chase Kaiser, for always putting things together. Uh, more importantly, we got to thank you guys for tuning in. I'm John Ramdeen. We'll see you next time on Five Rounds Today. Thanks so much for tuning in.